Do you know the story of the Candyman? Yeah, same one from the 1992 film based on a short story by Clive Barker. Candyman is a twisted amalgamation of classic myths and modern horror. The Candyman could be compared to the urban classic Bloody Mary, but this guy has a hook and some strange relationships with bees. There's an interesting backstory to the Candyman that places him on his own shelf in the urban lore bookshelf. I'll let you research that for yourself if you're not already familiar. At its most basic, I can explain the tale like this. Say his name five times in front of a mirror, and you'll die an incredibly fantastic death. Why would you invite your own demise? Well, because it's just a game, right? And it plays on all of your childhood curiosities and fears. Say Bloody Mary three times into the mirror? No. You do it! Well, you know, we all know nothing will happen, so why don't you just say it then? So we all get caught up on the Candyman. Have you then heard of the Twizzlers Man? More specific sugar-themed character. No, you haven't heard. Well then, please sit back, relax, grab a bag of popcorn and your favorite sweet treat. Turn off the lights. Or at least dim them. 1975. America's Bicentennial. This story revolves around Alfred Welsh. Alfred lived by himself in his family's farmhouse for his entire life, grew up milking cows, mending fences, preparing various livestock for consumption, to both commercial and individual sale. Alfred had several siblings helping with the various tasks around the farm. Throughout the years, they all found different callings. Alfred stayed. When both his parents passed, one not too far from the other, the Welsh family farm was solely his. Most farming families had children just for the help, and Alfred never found his way to this path. Awkward, tall, and skinny, and perpetually smelling like cow dung. Just didn't seem in the cards for him. Being a farmer is a noble job. They produce the food that feeds much of the country. This was before the Walmart-style farms that mechanically and methodically produce genetically enhanced animals that are now delivered to our door. Being a farmer didn't make him unappealing to women. He lived in a rural farmland where farming was what most of them did. No... Oh. Alfred was off. The word back then might have been a spaz or touched. He wasn't. Alfred was incredibly intelligent. He read every paper he could find, excelled in math, science, before having to focus more on his work at home. The stories that came out after the... well, after, were alarming. The neighbors complained of missing pets. More than one claimed to see Alfred attempting to peep at the girls under the school's bleachers during Friday night football games. None of these confirmed to be true, of course. By the year 1975, he was an adult, firmly handing the Welsh family farm estate. For years, the farm was staying above water, impressive being that he had no children of his own to help with the multiple chores needed to keep up daily production. There was no job too small on a farm, it was here that he enlisted the help of a handful of town boys. Alfred made it known that the help was needed, and he even paid a meager wage if his friends in the community would oblige. Alfred was strange, sure, but he was not disliked at all. He was also known as kind of the town handyman. He had a mechanical mind that allowed him to fix anything from the school drinking fountain to one of his colleagues' heavy-duty John Deere tractors kept him calm. If you grew up in a rural area, especially pre-internet era, you could imagine how valuable someone like Alfred would be. Calling an actual mechanic wouldn't only take time, but would hurt your wallet pretty bad. Alfred barely asked for a 25-cent bottle of Coca-Cola. Alfred kept busy between his farm work and his small-town projects. He truly loved giving work to the town children. It was a good experience for them, and it helped him mightily. Keeping the pens clean was just one crucial job, that kept his farm working. He managed this goodwill for quite a long time. It was a story that rocked this small farming community. Police were perplexed. The small town force was not equipped to investigate over a dozen missing children. The necessary technology was not there to help. When one of the missing children turned up dead, massacred in a heinous fashion, it changed many lives. 
All that was found near the unfortunate 13-year-old child was one shoe and just two pieces of Twizzler candy. Current year, 2022, Anno Domini, Mr. Dark Knight, one of, if not the very first YouTubers to feature mainly scary content. Real name unknown. He must have decided early that he would not reveal his identity, but was totally fine with revealing what he looked like. 2006 was a different world in YouTube terms. There's really no VTubers back then either way. Mr. DN, as he's known to most of his subscribers, started doing the now well-known countdown of scariest whatevers. Could be top nine scariest buildings, ghost sightings, abandoned psych wards, etc. He smartly moved to actually investigating some of these famous haunts right when the ghost hunter fever hit in about 2007. If you're around during this time, then bless you, especially if you loved paranormal culture. Ghost hunting was seen as kind of lame, to put it plainly, on mainstream network television, even cable TV. Eventually, the paranormal community broke down the walls of Jericho, letting the powers that be know that they wanted content of ghost sightings, creepy shadows, and EVPs, or electronic voice phenomena. Mr. DN was right there bringing his team of ragtag friends to attempt to pierce the veil in such sites as the Clown Motel, the Stanley Hotel, and the defunct Sloss Furnace in Birmingham, Alabama. He even did a tour of some of Europe's most famous haunts, traversing some of the most interesting medieval settings in history. His channel exploded. Which brings us here. Mr. Dark Knight has teased his next investigation. He and his team will be traveling to the middle of the United States Plains to see if this modern-day Twizzler Man legend is indeed fact or fiction. What's up, guys? Mr. DN here. Welcome, Dark Nation. We are here, here in the supposed town that the legendary Twizzler Man legend was born. A lot of you asked for this, and I'm here to say that I was completely unfamiliar with this one. Candyman, heard of. Bloody Mary, heard of. The birthday face guy, April Fool's killer, I know, but this one, this one was different. Apparently back in the mid 70s, there was an unfortunate rash of missing children in this rural farm town. A dozen children went missing from what I could research. Some of them turned up in the most worst ways imaginable. You all know me. I don't dive into the grotesque or gore aspects. You can find another content creator for that. You can also search this online for yourself. There were three children that were found deceased. Unceremonious is the word that comes to mind. The last victim was found with a couple Twizzler candies next to his corpse, hence the sick name of this urban legend. Not one arrest has ever been made. I was curious as to the basic history of Twizzlers. Seems like they were somewhat new, no? Well, apparently Twizzlers were introduced in 1929, after World War I and before World War II. Hershey's produced them, in fact. No, it's somewhat notable. The Dark Knight is filming this as part of his TV show. Some from the younger generation might see this as a step backward. Online media is clearly the king at this moment. Television is quickly becoming seen as the way of the dinosaur, but Mr. DN is a little older than the average YouTuber. He's one year from becoming 40, meaning that he still holds a special place in his heart for TV. Getting your own show on basic cable is an accomplishment. He is more than thrilled to be hosting his own 30-minute, highly edited show on one of the travel channels that hosts such paranormal bangers these days. The Dark Knight crew pulls up to the alleged Welsh farmhouse in a convoy of about four black Cadillac Escalade rentals. Not only were they slick and stylish, but they are also still a symbol of making it. And they have room for the crew and their modest cache of TV equipment. The scout crew has already set up the farmhouse. Dien did not want to see the place ahead of time. He wanted a shot of him driving, walking up to the site of what may be one of America's lesser-known serial killer abodes. And he made the right call. Yo. Dark Knight looks in stunned silence. What is this, some Freddy Krueger shit? One of his producers frowns, starting to remind him that he can't curse, but quickly thinks better of it. We can easily edit or censor that. Let the man continue with his genuine reaction. It's true. They burned this man's house with him inside. Mr. DN takes a moment to let this location wash over him. He's a spot in the middle of miles of farmland. Nothing else would be noticeable about this place, except that we're looking at the charred remains of a home attached to a legend that's never been introduced to the larger American audience. 
All Dien saw was the remains of a stone chimney, and a perimeter of what used to be a home. A slab of old concrete made up the base, and a basement hatch could be made out on one of the sides of the home. Not sure if this was a fruit or meat cellar, or what it was meant for, it appeared the home itself did not have a basement. Okay, we're going to set up here and start taking a preliminary look at this area. Tonight, my team and I will be doing some sessions trying to summon the Twizzler Man. I'll explain the ritual later. I just can't believe this place is actually real. How does no one know about this? Mr. Dien then goes into a little more history of the lore. Town historians estimate that between the years of 1975 and 1981, more than a dozen children had gone missing from the small town's farming community. A lot of parents had gained suspicion of Alfred being the key suspect, as the children, who had been loaned out as help, had been the ones missing. The police could never find a connection to Alfred. One unnamed parent told the local paper that he thought it was weird that all Alfred ever asked was for a bottle of Coke and maybe a package of Twizzlers. When the Twizzler candy was found at the site of one of the last victims, the town was livid. Now waiting for the police to continue their investigation, which they already felt was lacking, they apparently marched to the Welsh residents with pitchforks and torches, a la Frankenstein, and burned the house down, knowing, or maybe not knowing, that Alfred was inside. Again, this is all part of the legend. The house was burned down, that we know is fact, and we know that now seeing it, Alfred was also found burned to death inside. He never received a burial or an obituary. This has the feeling of a small town keeping the story under wraps and just sweeping it under the proverbial rug. Chilling stuff. The Night of the Investigation, 2022. What is up, Dark Nation? It is your boy, Mr. Dark Knight again. I already gave you a quick history lesson on the Twizzler Man. Now, did you know that almost 47 years later, people are going missing again in this same town? I know. Can this get any more nightmare on Elm Street? This time, though, it's not like he's going after the children of the parents that killed him. A strange game has surfaced by seemingly unrelated folks. Amateur ghost hunters and urban legend fans have grabbed hold of this new... Twizzler Man Challenge. On Reddit, on 4chan, they flocked to this farm town to complete this game. Some to their own demise. Mr. Dien then puts the disclaimer that while some mysterious deaths have occurred by outsiders to this area, none have officially been confirmed as a result of playing this internet ritual. Here's the game. Travel to the site or even the town where Alfred lived. For liability's sake, I won't be naming the actual town or state. Find a solid base, such as concrete or wood, on the ground, and draw a door in chalk. Surround yourself in a protective barrier of salt, bringing twelve pieces of Twizzlers as an offering, or an homage, to the apparent victim. Repeat the following by yourself or with a group. Doesn't matter either way. Alfred, see me. Alfred, hear me. Alfred, hear me. Tell me what happened. Say it three times. After the incantation is done, close your eyes. Keep them closed for at least 30 seconds, and when you open them, count the candies. If there are less than the ones that you placed, you are successful, and the Twizzler Man will be visiting you soon. To do what? No one's documented. If you have more then we all know it might be too late. Mr. Dark Knight takes a moment with his crew, doing their pre-game ritual at every investigation. Showtime. What is up, Dark Nation? It's the moment you've all been waiting for. We are here at the supposed site of possibly one of the darkest, deadliest killers in our history. But is it true? We're going to do a ritual tonight. Stay tuned, fam. Deanne's right-hand girl, Mrs. Deanne, chalks the ground where Alfred lived and died. She then pours the salt and places twelve Twizzler candies as carefully as if they contained anthrax. She nods to the host of the show, letting him know that it's ready. Filming? He asks. A nod from the cameraman confirms they are. Okay, Dark Nation, here we are. I will now step into the circle. Dark Knight takes a breath. 
slowly falls to his knees and starts to chant. Alfred, see me. Alfred, hear me. Alfred, tell me what happened. The camera zooms mythically on Mr. Dark Knight's face. 30 seconds of eerie silence. Then he opens his eyes. He looks around, taking in the environment that doesn't seem to change. He looks to his producer, his partner, and his cameraman. I don't feel anything, do you guys? Camera shakes a confirmational no. How about, uh, wait, how, how, how many Twizzlers did you put down? Twelve, yeah, twelve, like the ritual said. Mr. DN continues to count the Twizzlers, mouthing the number. After counting them once, an overpresent look of fear comes over him. He counts again. One, two, three, four. There are fourteen licorice pieces here. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I wanted to tell you, thank you for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. If you guys are interested, because we're moving into spring right now, that means that the uh, allergy seasons are going to be hitting us. And I don't know if you guys can hear it very well, but it hits me pretty hard to get yourself past a couple of those allergies, aller, aller, allergy, allergies. My wife sells tea. I don't know if that's connected, but hey, it's it's a segue and my wife sells tea. Check out etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea to be able to check out some of the tea that my wife makes. And you can even get a special sticker if you order the Mr. Cree pasta tea and you ask for it. It's a, it's a sticker of me doing a, doing a dab. It's one of my Twitch emotes. And I want to give a big thank you, as always, to all of my Patreon subscribers on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. You are the ones that allow me to do stuff like getting specific stories just for the channel. If you guys want to see more of that, then I would really, really, really love if you guys could help support on Patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta like some of these wonderful guys such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Silty K. Sterlerson, Zachary Graphius, It's All About That Fucking Music, Gorang Trimegacy, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Dabbles Rat, as Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Milver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Barterhawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Sicardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, the Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. You guys, as well as everybody if you look down in the description, and everybody that can even just give one dollar to be able to help things out, I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to join this list of names that I horribly, horribly mispronounce, check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and honestly, even you guys who just listen, you watch, you comment, you like, you subscribe, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And sweet dreams. <laughs>